I am joined now by Gauteng Health MEC, Dr. Norma Temba Mukherti. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. I want to start with a personal question to you, if I may. I know that you had COVID-19 recently. You were, of course, vaccinated back in February, uh, but you did get a mild case. I just wonder if you could tell us, if you're better, how are you feeling and whether you think the vaccine helped you? Good evening, Sally, and good evening to your listeners, and thank you for having me. Uh, Sally, I think I am a living testimony that the vaccine really works. It is true that I had mild symptoms, and as they are saying, the vaccine helps you not. It, it provides that layer of protection. Uh, you, you, are, you are not, um, uh, uh, you will not be able, you, are, you will not be hospitalized and uh, it prevents death, and that is true. I saw it uh, from me. If I would have not vaccinated, it would have been worse. Hence, I'm urging our elderly that they must get this vaccine so that they can get the protection, because once you have comorbidities you or your elderly, your immune system is compromised. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you are in good health once more, uh, Doctor. But could you tell us a little bit more about the vaccine sites in Gauteng? I understand they have been ramped up. Do we have enough vaccines for everybody over 60 who wants them in the province? Tell us about uh, the latest in the rollout here. Okay. With regard to the vaccines, the National Department is the one that is uh, distributing. And then so far, we have been receiving enough to can be able to vaccinate. And we have also increased our vaccination size. Uh, currently, we have from 129 to 140. And this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we will be, because Johannesburg is the one that has uh, most of the uh, um, old age homes and they are not reaching their targets. So we will be opening um, a mass vaccination site at Barra, uh, Lillian Goli Clinic. And then we we'll starting from tomorrow, we will be on local radio stations encouraging our elderly to come and get their vaccination. Of course, we've seen quite a, a spike in uh, 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 third wave infections, 5,100 new infections in Gauteng yes. alone. That's, this is really alarming. Do you have stats yet for today? Because I think the worry is uh, that this could be, 8,000 odd infections nationally could be the new trajectory. I suppose we're hoping for lower stats today to see maybe that was just a blip. Do you have any idea of where the stats are heading at this point? We are really worried about the dead and the spike and we, we will be monitoring it if it is consistent for the next two days, uh, then that would mean that we will have to to readjust our plan and then get to um, to assess and analyze what could be uh, the cause. Because in most cases, in, in, when you have a spike like that, uh, it is for the first time that we get 50% uh, increase in, 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 in a day. So sometimes you might find that um, there the were super spreader events that proceed, uh, preceded that. So we are currently, our teams are on the ground in making sure that they analyze and follow up on all those um, contacts of the people who tested positive. Talk to us about what's happening with Gauteng hospitals. We know uh, that there are some real concerns. Charlotte McClaker has not yet reopened over two months after that fire. Uh, also other hospitals dealing with serious water supply problems, which of course I would imagine is just adding to the burden uh, as we go into a spike of COVID infections. How many of our hospitals are actually full at the moment? Uh, how many are having to divert patients? Do you have a picture across public and private of the province? Um, currently, what I can tell you is that um, uh, we have uh, more admissions in the private sector than in the public sector. This afternoon, we got a report that uh, about 900 patients are admitted in our in our public hospitals. And yes, uh, uh, Charlotte will have an impact if it, it can be closed for longer. But uh, so if I can say, we have more beds now than we had in the first and second week. We have recently activated 150 bedded facility in Bronco Street Hospital and also in Anglo Gold Ashanti in the Western, uh, more than 170 beds. And then in Barra, more than 300 beds. 
and jubilee more than 300 days. And as and when uh, there's a need to repurpose the base to, to COVID uh, 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 base, that is what our facilities are doing. But we're also concerned that uh, we might have to contest uh, or to contest with trauma patients uh, vis a vis our, 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 our COVID patients. And Hence, we, we, we want to send a message out that uh, people must avoid super spreader events. They must make sure that when they go out, they put their masks, they wash their hands, and make sure that they avoid uh, uh, congregating yeah. in closed uh, facilities or, or a, in, in the household. Such an important message, and it's really great to hear about these extra beds at Bronchospray, Anglo Gold Ashanti, uh, and Jubilee Hospitals, among others. Uh, that is certainly good news. Um, the Premier has called for Charlotte McLeake to be declared a local state of disaster. I presume, I presume you support that. What would that mean if that is declared a local state of disaster? Does that release more funds? What we are currently doing, we are lobbying uh, authorities. We have uh, engaged the, the Minister of, of Cocta and the Minister of Health to, to really assist us because we shall not be uh, closed for such a long time. Uh, and if it can go further, with the numbers increasing, it's really going to put pressure on our, our hospitals. So we are just we are still waiting a response from both ministers uh, so that they can be able to assist. All right. I have to ask you a question about the 10 babies. Um, I wonder if you are able, as the Gauteng Health MEC, to tell us any more about these babies. Uh, we spoke to the family last night. They confirmed to us that 10 babies were born to this mother. They haven't disclosed the hospital or medical facility that she is in. Um, have you, we know, of course, that the Gauteng government is saying we have no record of this, but has there been any update uh, from the Gauteng government side uh, as to the whereabouts of the mother and these 10 babies? Have you been able to trace them? Has anyone from the government of Gauteng been able to see them, talk to them? You know, Sally, since we, we, we heard about the news, the department has been trying to trace, we trace all our public health facilities. We could not get any confirmation. We also uh, traced with the, with the private sector. We could not get any confirmation. What we are seeing is the, the news and, and uh, on Facebook that these babies are there. But the numbers that they gave us to follow up and call, nobody is picking up. So at this stage, we are still uh, trying to, to also follow up. But if there's anybody who can be able to assist us and and tell us where these babies are, I think we'll be able to follow up and, and assist where we can as a department. All right, so you have uh, no official record of the no. 10 babies and you are asking them to reach out uh, so that you can make contact with them. And uh, thank you so much uh, for chatting to us this evening. We were hoping to do a Skype or a Zoom call. Of course, load shedding has struck, hence the telephone call, uh, but it was really good to get that update from you. And thank you so much for your time this evening, Gauteng Health MEC Dr. Norma Temba Mukherjee, recently recovered from a mild bout of COVID-19. She, of course, had the jab in February. Some good news announcing, of course, that the Gauteng vaccination sites are moving from 129 sites to 140 sites now, and that they're going to be targeting old age homes this weekend to encourage the elderly to get vaccinated.